I'm Rob Jones, and welcome to the Ableton Live Advanced course. The aim of this course is to take your knowledge of live and music production to the next level by showing you various advanced techniques for using different areas of the software to inspire you and help to develop your own unique way of working. I'm assuming that you've either already taken the beginner's course or have a pretty good understanding of live, as the pace of the advanced course is fairly quick. For example, you should know about how to play with or edit audio and MIDI clips in session and arrangement view. You should have a good idea about how to use devices with tracks. And you've hopefully started to grasp the concept of things like envelope modulation when it comes to effects and instruments. We're going to start off quite gently though by looking at some different mixing techniques such as automation and vocal processing. At any point during the course, if you have any questions, you can contact me on support at abletoncourses.com or you can visit the online forum, where you can discuss issues with other students and myself. Starting with automation then, when you make changes to a control value, and those changes are recorded to a track in arrangement view, so that they happen automatically as your song plays, then this is called automation. Virtually any control on a track can be automated, as well as many global parameters, either by changing the control manually as the song plays, or by drawing in an envelope in an automation lane and arrangement view. Before going into automation though, I want to show you a new and much requested feature in Live that creates smoother transitions between clips in your session, and that's fades. When in session view, an audio clip has an extra switch in the sample box labeled fade. This is active as default unless you deactivate the create fades on clip edges preference under the record warp launch tab. What it does is automatically insert a fade between 0 and 4 milliseconds at either end of the clip to create a zero crossing point and avoid any clicks or pops created by abrupt waveform edges. The effect is subtle and rarely causes unwanted softening of clips, but if you want to switch it off then just deactivate the fade switch. There's no fade switch in the sample box in arrangement view because fades are viewed and edited on each track by selecting fades in the title bar here. You can see by zooming in now that the fades are shown by a red line at each end of the clip, with a shaded corner on the coloured strip also indicating the length of the fade whilst the track is folded away. The length of the fade is adjusted by clicking and dragging on the top marker, as follows. And the shape of the curve is adjusted by clicking and dragging on the lower marker, like this. So it's nice and easy to create a fade that starts off quickly and then gradually fades out over a longer period of time. When two tracks are adjoined, the fades on each are slightly overlapped to create a cross fade, so that there is an even gentler transition from one to the next. You can edit these in exactly the same way as normal fades, clicking and dragging like this. This allows you to blend two tracks together by extending the fade all the way over here. On to automation then. For those of you who are new to automation, then it's an essential part of mixing if you want to create more interesting dynamics and good transitions between sections of your song. I've just put together a few loops here which build up to a main beat kicking in so we can automate some of their parameters. The most common form is probably track volume, so let's start with an example of that. You may want to have a part gradually fade in at the start or end of a section. I've got my Novation Zero SL controller mapped to the mixer, so I can record in the volume automation manually using one of the hardware faders. But if you don't have a MIDI controller, then you could just do it yourself using the mouse on the live mixer. The way I do this is by hitting record on the control bar and then starting the session. Whilst record is active on the session transport, any changes to the mixer or devices are recorded into the arrangement as follows. You can see the automation envelope displayed on the track, as well as an automation LED shown on the control in session view. The quickest way to remove this automation is using the context menu, brought up by control clicking or right clicking on a PC on the title bar, and selecting clear envelope. You can also clear all envelopes in the same menu to quickly remove all automation on that track. Although you can edit the shape of the envelope from the view you can see here, deleting isn't possible as you'll only delete the actual clip itself. 
So what you have to do is click on the plus switch here, which adds an automation lane for the selected parameter below the track. You can also find an option for adding automation lanes for all parameters with envelopes in the context menu. Automation lanes allow editing of the selected parameters alone. They can be resized by clicking and dragging in the normal way and folded away using the fold switch here. Once automation is being created, the parameter will follow that envelope while your session is playing, unless you manually change the parameter yourself. Doing this will temporarily break from the automation envelope, allowing you to try out other settings or envelopes instead. The automation LED and envelope both grey out when this happens, and the back to arrangement switch lights to indicate that the automation has been overridden. Clicking back to arrangement reactivates the automation should you wish to return to the stored settings. Envelope editing can be done while draw mode is active or inactive, depending on the type of curve you want to create. A linear increase or decrease is most easily created whilst it's inactive and is done by double clicking on the automation curve to create a breakpoint, then dragging the breakpoint up or down as required. The easiest way to create a curve is to activate draw mode, then deactivate snap to grid, after which you can draw in the curve you want. Having snap to grid active makes the pencil tool draw in a fixed value between the two grid positions. So if you want a synchronized progression of values, then this is the mode to create it in. For example, you could have a filter frequency that changes on each beat of the bar. To do this, you could insert a filter on the track and then adjust the frequency in the parameter box on the device, which makes that parameter selected on the track up here. Then you can widen the grid so that each beat just has one grid position. Then you can activate draw mode and select a sequence of values as follows. Now when you play the arrangement, you can hear the filter opening a little more every beat. To see all the available parameters that can be automated on each track, you can use the two boxes here. Firstly to select the mixer or a device on the track, and then the box below to choose a specific parameter. So now we have a specific automated sequence for the filter frequency here. We can add an automation lane for it. Then to create a new automation lane for the filter resonance, we just select auto filter once more, then select resonance, then click plus. Now the automation lanes can be edited freely. So to copy the same automation as that used on the filter frequency over to the resonance, then you can select the automation here, select copy, then position the flashing insert marker on the resonance track and select paste. Now when you hit play, you can see the filter frequency and resonance following the same pattern. As automation can be recorded manually, like audio or MIDI, you can make use of the punch in and out settings. So if you have an automated sequence here for the track panning, but you only want to re-record a small part of it, then you can select just that part with the loop bracket activate punch in and out, place the flashing insert marker a little before, then hit record and play. And only the part within the bracket will be recorded. The master track offers some global parameters for automating too. You've got song tempo, if you want to have a section where the session speeds up or slows down. I got the stuff. Grab me and you've also got crossfade, which is useful if you've recorded a DJ set. As well as global groove, where the amount of groove that you may have applied to any of the tracks in your session can be increased or decreased together. Let's have a bit more of a look at the reverb effect then, as this was only touched on briefly in the beginners course. Reverb creates reflected or reverberant sound on a track, which adds depth by giving the impression of space. Whereas panning moves the signal left and right in a stereo field, reverb moves it back and forth by changing the timing and regularity of the reflected sound. With reverb you first get the early reflections after what's called a pre-delay, followed by the reverberant tail of slowly fading sound, which is referred to as the diffuse in live. Let's have a look at some of these parameters in live's reverb then. <laughs> 